It's a really wild place, potentially quite dangerous. So the idea is to get up in the morning and have a look around, make sure that the sea is correct and take off at the right tide. You can have seven metre tides here some days. And if you get caught off guard around the headlands, you can have standing waves that break. You just got to time it perfectly for this little craft. This is my idea of adventure. It's connecting with the wilderness. It's a time to throw away the watch and just be at one with nature. I knew the lip of it was built pretty light, and I thought, well, if it was to break up in a big sea, I could just cut the ropes and lashings with a knife, and then we could take off in the sea kite and be pretty safe. Safe? <laughs> I was dreading being in the water for one minute. Because the sea's just alive with sharks, and the estuaries are full of crocodiles. And then if you did go ashore, it's hard to find water anyway. Life on board is cute, but very cramped. But still, we really grew to love our little floating home. Yeah, it's only about three knots. Really. It's not helping. Yeah, you need to be aware of the boat's balance at all times. Shine the torch for me, please, darling. Yeah, sure. We had to maintain That's certain great. standards. Low, but these bits of coral bounce fire. Ah, very clever. <laughs> Whoa! <Ooh. laughs> That's an oyster shell. Yeah, I'm going to watch them. It must have got stuck in the box. Got a good grip? Ooh. Oh, you know, this place is full of crocodiles. Yeah, that <laughs> oh God, this must have been one of the most nerve-wracking nights of my life. Mud and mangroves for miles. Sleeping up some bay in the middle of nowhere, circled by the biggest crocodiles in my imagination. I see one, but they certainly see us. Mm. They're very cunning creatures. Bed time. Turn the lights mm, out and the blow candles. And the An active volcano a few years ago. We found that. There was nowhere you could really land and camp. The ocean floor was bottomless, it's like thousands of metres deep below. And it was an ideal opportunity, I thought, to test out the chimeran. Chimeran is the, the name I gave to the, the marrying of two kayaks together. I arranged the rigging on the chimeran to suit the tent. And I wasn't really sure of how, how it's going to hold together, whether it could handle up to rough seas or, or how it would really go. We were warned earlier on about the spirit, the Masalai of the island of Ritter, and that if you make too much noise or if you disturb the spirit in such a way, it will cause rough seas and violent winds and heavy storms. And Noah also reconfirmed that. And then we were laughing and carrying on because it just happened to be Rourke's birthday. 
I noticed that the speckle of rain started on the roof and harder and harder it became and the wind started to whistle and then it started flapping and Noah's saying, Larry, we have disturbed the masala of the island, you know this. Yeah, well, the steam, uh, this is really boring, man. It's okay, it looks beautiful. All right, so, being up, let's go with ourselves. It's great to do the dishes, eh? Man. It's the biggest kitchen sink I ever did see. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night, Noah. Good night, Les. At first light, we disassembled the tent, flung the tent inside the kayaks, put up the parafoils in the sky, and down when we went. felt pretty strange for a while, you know, and I thought to myself, I'd, I really should have tested this rig out back home in Malakuta, but there just wasn't time, like it was a dream that come up at the last minute when we were about to head off to Papua New Guinea. So we're heading across to Sakar Island. Using a sail can be a pretty relaxing way to go, whereas extreme paddling can push you to the point of hallucinations.